what's up everybody welcome to my channel today i'm gonna be working on this 2005 volkswagen beetle it has a 1.8 turbo with an automatic transmission and i bought it like two weeks ago so when i bought it i turned it on i drove it home and as i was driving it to my shop i noticed that the ac didn't work and it's not a big concern because it could be fixed and that's what i'm gonna be doing today so i already replaced a couple of things and i want to start driving the car but i don't want to drive it without ac because right now it's pretty hot so i'm gonna try to fix the ac i'm gonna start off by checking the most common components as the fuses the compressor the condenser make sure there's freon in the system and there's not a leak so the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna check the fuses and i'm gonna check the pressure and if the fuses and the pressure is fine then i'm gonna look into other components so i'm gonna go ahead and start by checking the fuses so i'm gonna start with the fuse box this is a very common problem on most volkswagen beetles so this fuse right here sometimes it's blown or it's not making proper contact because the box is already melted or it's effective so i'm gonna go ahead and grab a power probe and i'm gonna make sure i'm getting power through all my components i got my power probe so i'm gonna start testing all the components first i'm gonna make sure i have 12 bolts coming from the battery and it looks like i have 12 bolts so i'm gonna start checking each component So everything's good on this side. Now I'm gonna check the three fuses. All right, so the fuses are good. Now I'm gonna check these three wires on the back. And to do that, I'm just gonna disconnect the connector. So you guys can't really see it, but I'm gonna make sure I get power coming out of all these three connectors. So that's the first one the second let me make sure i get the third one all right guys so there's the third one right here after checking with the power probe i make sure that everything's good on this area so i'm just gonna connect this back on and i'm gonna go inside of the car i'm gonna go to the fuse box next to the door all right so i'm gonna go ahead and open the door and i got more fuses over here I mean, it's kind of dark, you won't be able to see, but there's a fuse box right here. So there's my fuses in there. So you guys can go ahead and grab a diagram and check the fuses. I mean, I already know which fuses to check. I'm going to show you guys in a minute. But first, I'm going to grab the key and I'm going to turn the AC on. I don't know if you have to do with the, the key on and car running or not, but, but I'm going to turn it on, turn the AC on just to be safe. So you guys can pretty much Google the diagram. So here's the fuses and it'll tell you what they do right here. I'm looking for fuse number 16. That's the AC clutch and 16 is going to be the top fuse and it's going to be the, the third fuse from the left or the second fuse from the right. So I'm going to go ahead and check number 16 and I'm also going to check number five because it's the comfort. So I'm going to go ahead and check number 16 and number five because it looks like those two are related to the AC. So like I said before, it's going to be the third one on the first row and it's going to be the first one on the second row. So I'm going to go back to the car and I'm going to check those two fuses. So I can't fully open the door because I have the car on the lift, but I have enough room to check the fuses. So I didn't turn the engine on. I just turned the car on and the AC on and I'm going to go ahead and check the fuses. So it's going to be the third one on the first row. I'm going to go ahead and check it real quick. Okay, so that fuse is actually working. And I'm going to check the first one on the second row. All right, I checked some extra ones and they all seem to be working. And I checked them just in case. All right, so it seems like my fuses are good. I'm not going to bother on checking the control right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get a diagram and I'm going to see what's going on. Looking at the diagram, I should have something called the coolant fan control module. So it should be like a little controller that controls the fans. And here's the fuses that I just checked. So it's fuse 16 and fuse 5. I checked those two and they're working properly. The ones under the hood, it's two fuses. I checked all three of them and all three of them are fine. After that, they go to this module. It's called the coolant fan control module. So this is what turns the fans on when you turn the AC on and it also engages the AC compressor clutch. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the car on. I'm gonna turn the AC on as well. I already checked my fuses, so I know the fuses are good. 
So if this module is working properly, the fans should come on and also the AC compressor clutch should engage. I already checked my pressure, but I'm gonna double check it. And if I have enough pressure, the compressor clutch should engage. So I'm gonna go ahead and check right now. So this time I am gonna turn the engine on. And I'm gonna turn the AC on all the way. So the AC is on. Let me see if you're able to see. So I'm gonna go outside and the fence should be on and also the compressor, the clutch should be engaged. All right, so the compressor, it's not engaged. And also my fans, my fans, they're not on. So my fans are not spinning. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check that module and I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting power inside of the module. Okay, so I wanna show you guys real quick. So I have pressure right now. It's uh, at like somewhere around 80, 90. And the reason why it's high is because it's not circulating. So when the clutch engages, the pressure should go down so i'm gonna disconnect this real quick and i already know i have pressure so the clutch should engage another thing i noticed i noticed that they replaced the compressor so it could be a rebuild or a new compressor but i mean it looks pretty new so i'm assuming that the ac didn't work and they tried to fix it they couldn't fix it and like i said before i'm gonna focus on that module for now because it's another common problem on these cars so I'm gonna get it up in the air and I'm gonna check it because the module goes underneath the car. I mean, you could get it from the top, but you have to remove the battery and I want the battery connected because I wanna do some testing. So I'm gonna get the car up in the air and I'm gonna be checking that module. Now I'm underneath the car. So I'm gonna remove this plastic and then I'm gonna remove this one as well. This one has four bolts, one on the front, one on the back, and then on the other side, one on the front, one on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bolts, get rid of this plastic. And then this one only has one bolt on the back right here. And all you gotta do is just pull it down and it should come right off. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove both plastic. I got rid of my two plastics. I just put them on the side. Now I have access. This right here, this is the module and I have my two connectors. So these modules, they have two bolts on the, on the top. I should be able to take them off from the top. I have enough room. I mean, I'm able to fill them on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a wrench and I'm gonna take it off. All right guys, so I use this wrench. This one has a ratchet and it made it a lot easier to take the bolts off. So I got the bolts right here. These are the two bolts and, and I pretty much got it off. So here it is. So I'm gonna go ahead disconnect it and then I'm gonna bring it down. All right, so I got my module right here. I'm gonna open it up and check it out. But before I do, I'm gonna check my connectors and I'm gonna check I'm getting power if I am then i'm just gonna go ahead and open this box and see what's going on on my four wire connector i should be getting power on wire one and wire three so i'm gonna go to the car and i'm gonna check the connector and i should be getting power on on wire one and wire three okay so here's my connector and the good thing about this is that they're numbered so i should be getting power on number one and number three and it looks like this one right here is number three and i'm getting power now i'm gonna check number one and I'm also getting power, I'm getting 12 volts. It's 11.8 because I left the switch on with the AC on. Now I'm gonna go to the other connector. I'm gonna go to this one and as you can see, it has numbers so it's a lot easier to see which wire you have to check. So let me go back to the computer and see what wires I need power. All right guys, on the other connector, it looks like I need power on wire number four and wire number nine. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna check. Okay, so here's my connector and I'm able to see number four. And on this side, I have number nine. So I'm gonna check real quick for power. So this should be number nine and I'm getting power. And then uh, let me see number four. Number four is the second one. So I'm gonna check the second, there it is. All right guys, so my connectors are good. Now I'm gonna open the module and I'm gonna see what's going on. Before I open the module, I wanna see if I'm able to activate the compressor clutch with my power probe. So I'm gonna look for the wire number and I'm gonna see if I'm able to activate it. So it should be number 10 and it's a green and black wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I'm able to activate the clutch. All right, so it's a number 10. So it's gonna be the third wire from the right. 
so let me see if i'm able to turn it on all right so so there it is all right and it, i'm able to hear it so that means that my compressor clutch is working now i'm gonna go ahead and open up the module pretty much i broke the cover so i'm not gonna be able to reuse this because it has to be sealed so water doesn't go in and here's my module the only thing i noticed is that this capacitor right here it looks like it exploded i don't know if you guys are able to see it you're able to see it right there there's like a bubble on the capacitor so you're able to see like the little bubble right here so this capacitor is no good at this point i'm assuming that this module it's faulty so i'm gonna go ahead and order another one i'm gonna put it on and i'm gonna see what happens okay i got a new one online i don't know how reliable they are i'm gonna give it a try they're pretty cheap i honestly didn't bother to go to the dealer and ask but i mean i'm gonna give it a try and i'm gonna see if it works and if it doesn't work i'll just order one from the dealer but if this one works no problem then i'm just gonna leave it on and if it goes bad then next time i will replace it with one from the dealership so it looks like this is the same one it has the same numbers it has the same uh, part number as well so i'm gonna go ahead and install it and we'll see what happens and uh, this one is gonna have to go to the trash i just finished installing the other one but i wanted to show you guys this so you're able to get your hand through the fan and the lower radiator hose and uh, make your way up to the box and um to the bolts so it's not that hard there's plenty of room um it's not a big deal so i'm gonna go ahead and finish tying that up and i'm gonna connect it and test it and see if it works all right so as soon as i connected the module the fans came on so i'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the plastics on and then i'm gonna test the ac to see if it works okay so i bought this from ebay and the fans turned on but the compressor didn't turn on so i had to go to the dealer this is the box right here see it's a uh, certified so i had to go to the dealer and get this one they're like 400 dollars. i got a discount because i have a shop i would suggest you get a used one that is working or just go to the dealer and buy a new one because i mean you could definitely tell that i mean this is probably not gonna work i mean even the weight this is a lot lighter than this one and that doesn't mean that it's better because it's heavier it's better but i mean i'm pretty sure it has more components than this one and that's why um this one's a little heavier but i mean either way if you're gonna replace this part make sure you just get an original one and um i paid 20 dollars for this didn't work uh this is like 400 so just just buy a uh oem one get a used one that works make sure it works or just buy it new from the dealer after replacing the module from a dealer one the fan kicked in and the compressor you're able to see it the compressor is working as well and i already checked inside and it's blowing cold air i'm gonna show you guys in a minute okay so this is my thermometer i'm gonna go ahead and check how cold the air is coming out of the vents so all right guys so it's at 58 degrees 58 56 all right guys so my ac is working now apparently the problem was the fan control module so i'm pretty much done with the ac okay i already filled the system i only used one can so i only used one of these cans and i went up to 43 pounds i mean i think you could go up to 45 that's what it says on the uh on the gauge 45 pounds i think i did like 42 uh, you don't want to go over that because um, you might overfill it and it might not work properly so make sure you stay below 45 so all i have to do now is put these plastics back on and i'm pretty much done with the car so that's gonna be it for this video thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe if you have any questions let me know and remember do not buy ebay electrical components because i paid 20 dollars for this and it didn't work i'll see you guys next time